Today we're going to be giving a demo of the Libre Computer OS tool. This is a new utility we created to deploy operating systems over the internet to our single board computer family. And it is native to our second generation platforms like Lafrite and Renegade Elite and Lepotato V2. But today we're going to cover our older board, which is the Lepotato, Tritium, and Renegade without this function built into the board's firmware because those boards do not have onboard storage for the firmware. Uh, we're going to create a micro SD card that has lost and then from there deploy an operating system. And we're going to go over basics like, you know, checking out the trunk uh, serial port. So to get started, we downloaded the AML S905X CC.SD.bin. This file is the lost utility for booting up and flashing the OS on the potato. And we're going to write this to a micro SD card. We recommend two tools that are really effective at writing a raw images to micro SD cards. Some other utilities we know uh, don't do the trick because they do funny business with the partition tables or saving data. And then that causes the raw image not to be written correctly on the micro SD card. For um, the first generation board, it's really important that the boot sectors are written correctly. So the first tool that we recommend is Win32 Disk Imager. This is tried and true. And then there's another utility by the NetBSD folks, which is called RawWrite32. And this is just like Win32 Disk Imager, but has an extra checksumming functionality for when you select a file so that you can compare and make sure you got the right file. Uh, so we're going to get started by plugging in a micro SD card. Make sure that this micro SD card has nothing important on it because everything will be overwritten. Um, the while the lost installer is only 32 megabytes, uh, sorry, 16 megabytes, the partition table on the micro SD card will get destroyed. So any data that you have on there will get lost. Um, we're going to show writing on both tools. So to get started, we'll select the image file on Win32 Disk Imager. Uh, when selecting a file, you have to change the file format because it's the .bin file. These extensions don't matter, but it is important because it won't show otherwise. So if you select IMG, it doesn't show. And once you select it, you choose the drive that you want to write it to. So in our case, the micro SD card is drive D. You want to be careful that you write to the correct one because if you don't write to the correct one, you destroy the partition table on that device and you will be unable you'll be unable to recover the data. Um, so we just select that file and then we click write. And it says writing to a physical device can corrupt your device as I told you before. Do you want to continue? Yes. And it's a quick five second write. So we're going to do that again on the NetBSD raw write tool. This is not necessary. We're just showing you for comparison's sake. On this tool, by default, it's looking for a compressed image. So we got to change it to bin, and then we select it, and then it'll show us the SHA-256 signature. So if some for some people who are uh, who want to verify that the SHA is correct, that the download file isn't a partial or uh, corrupted in some way, this is a good way to verify it. And then after we did it, we must select the proper drive. So uh, it seems like the D is not showing up. Hmm, that's strange. Let me start it again. Oh, there it is. OK, so we select the file, computes the hashes. So our micro SD card here is 64 gigs. That, that's the beauty of this utility. It lets you see the different drive names, whereas Win32 Disk Imager doesn't. And then uh, this is the card reader, so we write to disk. You only have to use one of these utilities, you don't have to use both. We're just doing it for comparison's sake if you already have one of these. And then after it's written, it, everything's okay. We pop out the micro SD card. And then we put it into our board. Don't power the board on yet. The next step is, so here's an optional step. We're going to go over serial ports. So all of these boards have a debug port called a UART. And then on the low potato, it is here. These three pins 
offer basically serial access to the board boot up information. So before you get HDMI or CVPS out, you're going to get uh, text spit out of these pins here. And then if you have a USB to UART pin, we're going to show you how to set it up. We already have the USB to UART dongle plug into our computer, and then we're going to open up Device Manager. It's a device mgmt.msc in run. And then we're going to look for the COM ports. So we have a prolific USB serial COM port, which is on COM5. This is a typical cheap uh, ser blue serial dongle, and then it has Four, uh, three, four wires coming out, a red wire, a green wire, and a white wire, and a black wire. And then on the board, you plug the black wire to the top pin, the white, the white wire to the middle one, and then the green wire to the bottom one. You don't have to connect the red one because, because it's not necessary. And then from there, uh, you open PuTTY. We looked before we knew that it was um, a serial port. You gotta switch this from SSH to serial port, but because by default it comes in as SSH. So serial port, we set COM5, we set the speed to 115200, which is the baud rate of the serial cable. So it's the speed that they communicate at. And then we make sure that flow control is off. So on serial, we make sure that flow control is off. and then we click open. So this will give us uh, debug information from the board, as well as uh, serial console access should, should we need a serial version of what we're doing. Um, once, okay, so we have the micro SD card in our board. This is a camera interface for um, the HDMI output of the board so we can see what's happening. We're gonna power on. So you see the serial interface already starts spitting out information, but HDMI is blank right now. And then we keep pressing escape, so to interrupt the boot sequence. We have, uh, we're in the basic boot area, and then we want to start the lost utility. And then um, on, while, so it has booted up into something called U-boot, which is different than Linux. On Linux, these two are going to be separate terminals, but on U-Boot, these are the same terminals. So anything you do in one is reflected in the other. I have a USB keyboard plugged into the potato, and then I can use both to uh, move around in this menu. But once I boot into Linux, that 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 is, is gonna be different windows. Um, so we boot it up, and then we're waiting for lost to load. And uh, in the meantime, while this is loading, I want to say something about micro SD cards. Only stick to Samsung, uh, Samsung, and what's the other brand? Samsung and Sandisk micro SD cards. They're the two premier manufacturers of micro SD cards. We have numerous issues with people using fake SD cards that have different sizes, or they they don't have a good controller on the micro SD card that does wear leveling and then the micro SD card just reads back garbage data. Stay away from second tier brands like Kingston, et cetera, et cetera. Only keep to first tier SanDisk and Samsung cards. Okay, so Libre Computer OS tool is booted up and uh, it says press any key to continue. You know, you're doing this at your own risk because we're you know, dealing with operating system so you can lose data if you flash the wrong card. You know, this just implies uh, that Libre Computer is not responsible for any data loss due to your use of this utility. And then we press any key to continue. And then it connects to a server, asks for the uh, available operating systems that we can try to install. So for this demo, we're going to do Corelec, which is uh, a Kodi operating system based on uh, the Kodi project. So Kodi.tv. This, they, it's, it's a media playback um, operating system that is well supported by uh, community members. 
So we're going to type in core elect. Oh, notice how the HDMI and the UART are different now. But I can start the uh, loss tool on the HDMI interface as well. So it's too small to see. OK, let me just quit out of the UART one since that's probably not needed. And then maximize the HDMI version. So, so we're going to do core elect. We can do a 9.2.3 build. And then we can do MMC BLK1, which is the micro SD card that we just written lost to. And then do you agree? It'll give you a score as well as relevant information. Um, Cody released based on Amlogix SDK. Do you want to continue with the installation? Yes. And then it will proceed to go on the internet and download the release that you selected and install it to the device that you picked. And then these different OSs, they have different capabilities. Some of them are net installers. Some of them are disk dumps. Some of them are um, building the OS in real time in order to uh, make it bootable. So they use different techniques in the background to deploy the operating system. And although the download is done pretty much, the writing to the micro SD card is not done. So it's writing the remaining data to the micro SD card. Um, the image was probably compressed, so it's extracting and writing it uh, simultaneously as it's downloading it. The One of the issues is slow micro SD cards. So if you use a really old micro SD card or an off-brand micro SD card, this can be really, really, really slow. And then uh, there's nothing we can do about that. Uh, get a better micro SD card. We highly recommend the Samsung Pros and the SanDisk Extreme micro SD cards because not only do they have good flash, like MLC flash, they also have good controllers that do good wear leveling on the micro SD cards. And we're still waiting for this to finish. And just to cover something else while we're waiting, so we had to flash the micro SD card for Le Potato, but on Lafrit Tritium, I mean, sorry, Lafrit and Renegade Elite, we will have a native version that's built on board. You won't have to flash a micro SD card. That boot menu that you saw earlier, we can just go straight to boot lost and then follow this process to deploy an operating system. So uh, the installation is complete. Press any key to reboot. So we press the key and wait for it to reboot. So voila, Corelec is booting. So on first run, Corelec actually will resize the disk to, I mean, the partition table to the size of the disk. And it's doing that now. It does two, one of two things. So first, the partition table is describing how big the partitions are. It's resizing that to the maximum size. Then it's taking the partition itself, which is only, say, uh, 10 gigs, and then and stretching that so it's like 50 gigs. And then once it's done that, it reboots so that the Linux kernel knows that the partition tables have been updated. Voila. You just installed, installed uh, Corelec in less than five minutes. And that's the point of this utility is to accelerate the installation process. So currently with SBCs, it's kind of a pain in the butt to install everything, and it takes a long time. But with this, and especially with our ne next generation boards that have the lost installer built in, it literally takes minutes, and you don't have to have anything extra. You can just plug in a USB key or a micro SD card and do and just have an OS ready in minutes. And that makes it a great way for classroom settings. That makes it a, uh, to install an OS for classroom settings, as well as uh, to get the latest operating systems made available to you. And that's it. So... Uh, we highly recommend Corelec. It plays all kinds of 4K media on La Potato. It is one of the best uh, supported distributions we currently have. 
and uh, it can do all kinds of uh, additional. Yeah, there's a bunch of add-ons that you can do uh, streaming. You can do live TV. You can do media media playback and all kinds of playing off your NFS server, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So it's a great distribution to showcase the features of Little Potato. And that's a wrap. That's all we have for today. Um, hope you enjoyed our video on Lost. And uh, hope this was informative in helping you getting started with our single board computers. If you have any questions, please let us know. We're here to answer any of the questions that you have.